All right, my friends, here we come. First boot after the fresh install on VirtualBox. And here we are. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Nielsen Networking video. That video you were just watching could be you. Give me about 15 minutes and some change and I will show you how to download and install both VirtualBox and Ubuntu Linux inside it as a virtual machine. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. All right, first things, let's go ahead and get uh, VirtualBox downloaded. So we're gonna go to virtualbox.org. And when we get here, we are gonna hit the blue download or whatever color it is at the time you're watching this video. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna select Windows Hosts because we're on Windows. Now, if you were on a Mac, you would select Mac and Linux. You'd go in here and pick your distribution. And that's that, we'll let this finish. Okay, so the download finished. So what I'm gonna do is go show in folder. And then I am going to right click on the installer and do run as admin. And I'm gonna close out of here for now. And we'll just minimize this because we'll need it in a minute. And we're gonna go ahead at the uh, welcome screen, hit next. These are the default install options. Um, all the features, I would leave all of these. You're gonna want them all installed. So just leave them as they are. Down here, if you were low on space or you had another reason to change the install location, now would be the time to do it. You can always change your um, location where you're storing the virtual machines later. This is where uh, VirtualBox itself, the hypervisor is going to be installed. So um, now would be the time to do that if you want. Save yourself some headache from trying to move it later. So go ahead and hit next here. And this is just a warning telling you that you may experience a like little blip in your network connectivity while um, VirtualBox is installing its virtual ne networking components. No big deal, I've never really had any problems with this. Uh, now this is something, those of you that may have um, the software already installed, what this is telling us is that we're missing dependencies, meaning we, are, we do not have these uh, software packages installed that VirtualBox needs to operate. So it's going to download them for us. The only concern here is if you have Python Core or Win32 API previously installed, VirtualBox may overwrite those versions, which could cause um, conflicts with your existing software if they had dependencies on that. See what I'm saying? So you wanna go back and check that you uh, don't previously have these installed. You probably don't because you probably wouldn't have even got this message if you did. Uh, but just an FYI, I don't want you to go and do it and then you know, get upset with me for not explaining that. So you might you might just want to double check um, if you do have them. And you would probably know if you did because you would have had to have downloaded them. So there's my disclaimer. Go ahead and hit yes. And we're going to hit install. And we're going to wait a minute. This goes really quick. And as you can see, we are almost done. And we can go ahead and start it up. Why not? And at this point, we now have accomplished the virtual box part of this movie. And now we're going to move on to the uh, Ubuntu. So we're gonna do that by going out to our web browser. And you can use any web browser you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use Chrome. And we are going to go to this website. And I'll go ahead and throw this in the description, but it's uh, ubuntu.com. And we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. And when we get here, you're gonna give, be given a few different options. You're gonna to wanna to pick the most recent release, which right now happens to be 22.04.1. Uh, and LTS, that stands for long-term support, meaning they will um, keep this updated. Uh, similar to like Windows updates um, through them. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hit download and it will start the download process here in a second. And once this finishes, I will come back and we will begin the uh, installation procedure. All right, download finished. I'm going to go ahead and verify that it's about three point something gigs. It is, so we're good. So what we're going to do now to uh, begin the installation, we're going to go into VirtualBox and we're going to hit new. If my mouse will cooperate, we're going to hit new. And you can name this whatever you want to name this. Uh, I'm just going to name it, you again, whatever you want. Um, and then this folder, this is going to be where the physical, or I shouldn't say the virtual, machine will live, meaning whatever you allocate hard drive wise will live there. All the extra files needed to run that virtual machine will be there. So if you are tight on space, you would want to locate this off to a different um, hard drive if you had one. Um, otherwise, if you're good on the C drive, like I'm going to do it, just go ahead and leave it there. Now this is where we're going to need to browse to where we downloaded um, the installer, which for me was in downloads right here. And then I'm going to do skip unattended installation because I want to select uh, the options and I would suggest you do as well. And then right here, I'm going to bump this up to three gigs. 
Uh, you could, you, if you have the memory, you could go ahead and go up to four. You could even go up to eight. But again, I'm in a virtual uh, environment where I only have so many resources. So I'm going to keep this at three, which should be plenty. Three, zero, seven, two. And then I'm going to bump this up to two CPUs and I'm going to hit next. I'm going to leave it at 25 gigs. That's plenty for our installation. We are not going to check pre-allocate full size because that will actually assign a block of 25 gigs that we cannot shrink. So we're gonna start on the other end of the spectrum and start with the smallest drive possible with the maximum um, expandability up to 25 gigs. Uh, so that said, don't check any of these options here. Go ahead and hit next. And now we are at the uh, summary screen. We can go ahead and hit finish here. And before we fire this bad boy up, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings here and we're just going to add a little more video memory. Um, it may have already done it, but we're going to double check. No, it didn't. So you'll want to uh, bump the video memory up to the maximum just to give you a little nicer experience in there. OK, with that said, we are now ready to start the installation. Well, we've already OK, what we've done. OK, let me re rephrase that. We're going to start the installation of the operating system on side this virtual hardware we just set up so you can think of this as we are now installing the cd that we are going to boot off and you can actually see it's here right here as if you were physically putting this in a physical machine and we're going to install off that cd so that's what we're going to do right now hopefully that makes more sense so let's get to it all right and to do that and I just realized I said CD, that'd be rather difficult to put this on a CD. DVD, we're putting the DVD in. The DVD's in and we're going to start it up right now. So we're going to double click it. And we're going to boot off the DVD. Oops. So here we go. And the first window you're going to get is just warning you that uh, VirtualBox has captured your mouse. Uh, and you can click don't show this message again and hit capture. And what that's telling you is your mouse is stuck with inside VirtualBox. See, I can't move it out. And how you're going to get out of it is you're going to hit the right control key and that will let you out of it. Okay, so now that you know that, what we're going to do is we are going to install, try or install. And we're going to wait here. And these little pop-ups are annoying. You can actually turn them off later, but for now we'll just go ahead and close out of them. And there's the... Uh, Ubuntu uh, loading screen, pretty cool stuff. And this screen can stay here for a little while depending on uh, the resources, so don't don't panic if it stays there for a minute or so, it, it always does that. And same thing with this black screen. And here we go. Okay, and here we are at the uh, installer. And what you could do, you could actually try this if you did not want to install. Hey, look, they even put CD here, so maybe I'm not as crazy, right? Uh, just kidding. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and install this. What this would let you do is you would boot it off. It's called like a live, actually, it's called a live CD, um, which is funny. So you could actually boot off of it, and it wouldn't install it. It would load it into memory pretty much, and you could go ahead and try it. But you're not here to do that. You're here to actually install it. So you're going to select the language you want. Go ahead and hit install. And this is going to be your keyboard layout choice. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, next because I, um, I speak English. I wish I spoke a different language. Um, but I'm going to hit continue here. And we're going to want to do a normal installation. And we're going to want to download updates while installing Ubuntu. So hit next or continue. I'm sorry. And again, this can this each uh, each menu can take a little while, so don't panic. It's doing its thing. I know it's hard to stare at something that's not giving you progress indication, but don't worry about it. We're all good. Okay, so now it's asking us where we want to install, and you're just going to go ahead and install it on the default option. So go ahead and hit install, and it's going to tell you that it's going to want to install on these two partitions. That's okay. Uh, just go ahead and hit continue with the defaults. You have no reason to change those. Uh, and then you're going to want to pick your time zone. I'm just going to leave it at New York. That's not exactly where I'm at, but it's East Coast time, so that will work. You would want to pick yours, obviously. And then this is where you're going to pick the name. When it says your name, this will be your username. So you're going to want to go ahead and uh, I'm going to do just NN admin And computer name, I'm just going to put that. Um, Okay, okay, maybe I'm wrong here. This is actually just going to be your display name. My bad there. I should have read down further. This is going to be your username. So for this, I'm just going to put, if I can type, 
And then you're going to want to go ahead and choose a password. It's going to tell me my password is fair. I thought it's pretty good, but you know what, whatever. Uh, and I, you can do either one here, but from a security standpoint, being the guy I am, I would always suggest you click require a password to log in. We're not going to use ADA uh, in this demonstration. Uh, you may, but for this, we're not. So we're going to hit continue. And it's going to begin the installation process. So I'll come back to you at the next uh, prompt. All right, we're at the next prompt and it's nothing exciting. It's just telling us to restart. So we'll go ahead and restart. And you can just go ahead and hit enter here. And here we go. And there we are. Okay, for our first login, we are going to click on the display name here. And you are going to put in that password we just uh, set up in the uh, installation phase. And we're logging in for the first time. And we are here. And I am not going to select any um, online accounts, so you can go ahead and hit skip, or if you wanted to, you could. I'm not going to. Uh, and then right here, we're just gonna wanna hit next. And this is up to you. Uh, I'm not gonna send system info. You could if you want. And then privacy, I'm just gonna leave it off. I don't really need to care about location services. If you do, if you're gonna be using like Google Maps and all that, you can turn this on. But again, I'm doing this just in a lab, so I'm gonna leave it off. And then you are ready to go. So go ahead and hit done. And we are in, and there's a few changes we're gonna make, so I will go over them now. Oh, but before we do those, we're gonna go ahead and install this. It looks like there was an update, which is interesting because we just downloaded the media right off their website. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. If, if you don't see this, just go ahead and, uh, you know, proceed to the next part of the video. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this run real quick. Okay, and it's asking me to restart, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And remember, those of you that didn't get this prompt, you may have downloaded the uh, release that actually had these patches in them, so no big deal if you don't have them. But if you do get this prompt, I would suggest you go ahead and install them. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart. And when it comes back to the login, I'll come back. All right, I'm back at the login. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. We're almost done, just a few more changes and we'll uh, be done with the video. So what we're going to do now is we need to um, fix a resolution because no matter how you change this window, it's not going to make it any bigger. So what you need to do is actually go up here, and this is a virtual box thing. So you may need to hit control again. If you're stuck in here, hit control to get your mouse out and go to devices and click insert guest, C, uh, guest additions CD. See, there's a CD again. And you're going to want to scroll down until you can get to the CD. It may pop up in this menu automatically, but uh, for me, it usually doesn't. So you're going to want to click on this. And then what you're going to want to do is find the white area down here and just go to open in terminal. This just this is easier to see. So then what we're going to want to do is we're going to need to find the one that says VirtualBox Linux. Okay, so we're going to need this one. And you're going to just left click and then copy it. So you're going to do the left click, hold the left click down, drag it across, and then right click, copy. And then what you're going to want to do is do sudo. And we're going to do a period and then a slash and then we're going to paste that. That's telling it to run this executable in this directory. And sudo gives us root, which is the super user um, for uh, Ubuntu. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit enter and we're going to have to put in our password. And we're going to let it do its thing. This is very similar to if you've ever used uh, VMware tools in VMware. Same thing. So it's going to uh, want us to reboot now. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'll come back to you at the login screen. All right, I'm back here at the login screen. Go ahead and hit enter. Or login, I should say. And just so you can kind of see, look, we are in Windows and we are in Ubuntu. And you can already see the screen's bigger. Now check it out, I go full size. It will scale. So that's why it's important to get those guest tools. Otherwise, you're gonna be stuck on that little, I think it's like 800 by 600 resolution. And that's no fun. So at this point, we are pretty much done with the uh, installation of uh, uh, Ubuntu. And as you can see, everything went pretty smooth. There are um, you know, some packages you can install and all that that we may cover in another video, but for the most part, you have everything you need. Uh, you know, you have your terminal here. You have over here, you have Firefox, Thunderbird, if you wanted to set up email. Uh, it's, it's a nice interface. I think it's a nicer interface than Kali. The biggest downside is it doesn't come with some of those 
you know, um, ethical hacking tools, if you will, and other security uh, tools like that. But if you're not into that thing and you're maybe you're just a developer or a gamer or whatever, this is a perfect operating system for you. And it has really good support and a really good uh, core group of people that keep it up to date. So uh, if you've enjoyed this video, don't be afraid to smash that like button. Comment. Let me know what you thought. If there's anything I missed out, if you think there's a change that needs to be made, I am open to... Um, hearing your thoughts. So uh, subscribe if you want to hear us in the future. So other than that, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.